All right, guys, welcome to Upper Body Day. I've got a um, intense upper body workout we're gonna hit here in a second. But before we do, I want to give you an update, a little update on um, the whole uh, let the gains begin muscle gain phase I'm in. Um, so far, so good. I'm feeling good. Um, my workouts have been really good as well. I'm gonna start paying more attention to the energy level with workouts as I go through this muscle building phase as well. So stay tuned for more on that. So I'm gonna finish getting warmed up and now we're gonna hit it. So the first thing I have on my agenda today are, um, it's a dumbbell bench press with a pause. And I want you to pay close attention to how long I pause because this is where I think a lot of people go wrong. Whenever they have a pause in whatever exercise that they're doing, they blow through a pause. So if you really look at what you're doing, make sure your pause is two to three seconds. And the way to, to figure that out, I literally count Mississippis because you really, if you count Mississippis, you're gonna be holding it there for a long time. It's hard to blow through that word Mississippi legitimately. So count, I have tempo markings in my head because I am a musician, so I kind of know quarter note equals 60. I know what that feels like. But do whatever you have to do, but count, because a pause is there for a reason. It's to keep your muscles under tension longer. So don't blow through the pause. Two to three seconds and you're good. So one last thing I want to add about when you do a dumbbell bench press versus using the bar. I love dumbbells because if you have a wacky shoulder like I do, it's a lot more shoulder friendly than the bar. The bar locks you into a position and you're there. Dumbbells, you can play with the angle that you hold them. So if you noticed how I was holding my dumbbells, I wasn't holding them straight out. I had them at an angle because that's what feels best for me. And I have figured that out over time. So try it the next time you do a dumbbell bench press, play with the angle, find one that really um, fits you and what feels good for you. Okay, next, next up for me is a T-bar row. So T-bar rows, people, I've seen, them, I've seen people use a smaller grip, a wider grip. I'm gonna be using a smaller grip today. Um, my shoulder has not been in the best place the last week or so and using a smaller grip is a little bit easier on my shoulders so that's what I'm going to opt for today. But basically you're going to use um, the landmine attachment which we have at the gym and if you notice, I'm going to have Dan show it over here, um, we have set up with the smaller plates here instead of um, like a big 45. So I've opted to use the small 25 pound plates instead of a 45 pound and another plate. Because using the smaller plates, are going to, it's going to allow me to have greater range of motion because the diameter of the plate is smaller. You start using 45 pound plates, you've now cut out the range of motion by a decent amount. So smaller plates always do better here for the T-bar row. And again, I'm using the narrow grip instead of a wider grip. I think that'll feel better on my shoulder today. Um, so basically, you're gonna straddle the bar, position the handles where you can get your hips behind you, back is flat, abs are braced, and you're just gonna pull to the midline of your body and squeeze. And by the way, your core will light up with this exercise. Help me with this. Okay, chin-up clusters. 
and high incline single arm dumbbell bench press, my favorite. All right, so I've got chin-up clusters, but they're in sets of three this time. So I'm gonna be doing three reps, resting, three reps, resting, three more reps, resting. Now I gotta tell you, I am um, functioning on not enough sleep. I don't feel super energetic and super strong. I, we'll see how this goes. I think these, these cluster sets of three are gonna be really, really tough, but I'm gonna give them my best shot. So single arm, dumbbell bench press. I'm doing it on a higher incline. A lot more shoulder involved with this. Core is gonna be lit up. Um, 10 reps. That's a hell of a lot of reps for this. So um, I'm gonna try 32.5. I don't know, we'll see. That's gonna be tough, I think, especially on my left side, but um, I'm gonna give it a shot. A couple things to keep in mind on a single arm dumbbell bench press, whether you're at an incline or flat, you want to make sure that the free arm that's not holding the dumbbell is super tense. So you have tension going all the way up through your arm into your body. I like to make a fist to make that happen. What that does, it keeps your body from rotating towards the dumbbell. By tensing this up, it now can't rotate towards the dumbbell, which it wants to do. And that's where you feel your core get lit up on this exercise. This is why this is one of my most favorite exercises ever because it's just so much core involvement and a lot of strength. So here we go. go here overhead press and then bend over rows and shit <laughs> okay let's do this take in some water here we go okay so the first exercise I have as I sit here and pull up my hair um, are constant tension barbell overhead presses um, barbell overhead presses are fairly new to me within the last couple of months I haven't been able to really access them for years because of my shoulder, but my shoulder's in a better place, much more stable. So I'm slowly um, working a barbell. Um, when I have just regular presses, I add some more weight, but on these constant tension at high reps, I'm leaving it with just the bar. So I'm gonna be trying to get in 12 reps with just constant movement. And then I'm gonna come here and do um, a barbell row, bent over row. I choose to go an underhand grip here as opposed to overhand again, just because it's more shoulder friendly, feels better for me, but you can certainly go overhand like this, but you'll see me come here and the reason for that is just better for my shoulder right now. So 12 of each, that's a lot of reps. We'll see what happens.
95 pounds won't happen for three sets, at least three quality sets. So I'll be taking 10 off, staying to 85 to make the next two sets a little bit better. Um, I'm gonna stay the same with the bar. Keep the bar there. One thing of note, when I first started doing those a couple weeks ago, I couldn't get through 12 um, at all. Constant tension. But now, got through the first set and I think I'll be able to get two more sets of 12. So, shows you what practice and improvement will do over time. Um, just takes practice getting used to things and uh, keep at it, you know, and you'll increase weight. Okay, so I put up a question box on Instagram the other day and said I was gonna pull a couple of questions off to answer in this vlog. So here's the first question. Uh, your advice for dealing with injury setbacks. I think this is a great question because in my mind, it, what I used to think was happening with an injury was I was done. Like I, I couldn't do anything. I had to completely rest, not move, and just wait it out. And what I've learned over time is that's not what really most doctors will tell you to do. Um, and I, I've come from a background of having several injuries, uh, a short, significant shoulder injury, uh, some hip injuries, and a little elbow flare up, things like that. And through all of these injuries over the last five years or whatever, I haven't missed a single day of training, not one. But let me be really clear, when those injuries were at their worst, my training didn't look the same as it would have if I was perfectly healthy. So I guess my point here is, you can train around literally anything. What you need to do is find what you can do and do that and get stronger with that. Because what that's gonna do, it's gonna keep your head in the game. Because the biggest issue with injuries is not so much the physical part as it is the mental part. And, and we, we wanna give up and we're just so frustrated because we were so active and doing so well and we feel like now we're gonna lose all of our progress. Now we're gonna not make any more progress. And both of those things are not true. You can still make significant progress with an injury. So for instance, if your shoulder is injured, okay, maybe you can't do overhead presses, but you might be able to pull horizontally. And maybe you can, you can do a lateral raise with your shoulder and that feels okay but you, you can probably find a bunch of things that you can do, and then you can focus on doing those. And, and even as an example, I'll, I'll give you this example. When, when my hip was at its worst, and it was leg day, and I, I couldn't do a ton of stuff with my legs yet, what I did do is I went to the gym, and I hopped on a bike, and I got a band, and I was just moving my legs and doing band pull-aparts so I could stay active. I did that for maybe a few days and pretty soon I could add maybe a box squat or I could add a hip hinge or whatever it was, but I slowly added things back in. But I found what I could do so I could still feel like I was progressing, I was moving, I was doing something. So my advice is keep moving, find whatever it is you can do and go at that hard and, and you will feel like you're making progress because you are making progress. And slowly but surely, you will be able to add things back in and you're gonna be as good as new. So don't get frustrated, keep moving, and um, you will see, you'll, you'll see exactly what I'm talking about. And, and one more thing regarding that, you still are in control of your nutrition and let's never lose sight of that. Just because you're injured doesn't mean your nutrition has to go to hell in a handbasket. Keep control over that, that'll keep your head in the game too. Okay, so my next question is kind of a two-parter um, related. First part, how can I find out what my maintenance calories are after I reach my fat loss goal? That's the first part. And then piggybacking on that, how do I transition from fat loss to maintenance without gaining weight? Okay, so basically we're talking about transferring into maintenance. If you are going into maintenance from a calorie deficit, you reached your fat loss goal, you're ready to go back into a, a way of living that you can maintain your weight, the easiest way to do that is just to slowly add calories back in from where you have been in your deficit. So in, over the course of the week, maybe add 300 more calories in. So by the end of the week, you're 300 calories more than you were in your deficit. Not 300 calories a day, 300 calories over the course of a week. Now, if you want, you could add a teeny little bit of calories every day. That's a pain in the ass to try to figure out. What I would recommend you do is pick a couple of days, add like 150 more calories on those days, and then by the end of the week, you're plus 300. You need to monitor your weight as you do this because 
And this goes to the second part of this question. The scale is gonna go up when you start putting calories back in. But you need to understand the difference between the scale going up and fat. You're not gaining fat, you're gaining more weight. You're putting more food in your body. Your muscles are holding on to things, water. So you are, the scale is gonna go up, but you're gonna monitor that. If it's going way up very quickly, you need to scale back how many calories you're adding. But if it's creeping up slowly, that's what you want. Add 300 calories your first week, see what the scale does, and you're probably gonna need to add 300 calories again the next week on top of that. So you're in the plus column, maybe 600 calories over the course of a week. Remember, it's not every day. And eventually, you're gonna see your weight stabilize. And by stabilize, I mean hovering around the same one to three to four pounds. That's kind of where your weight is going to be stable and maintain. And once you've found that, you have found maintenance. And now you know about how many calories you need to eat for maintenance. If, and you do not need to start over with a new formula because you already know what your deficit is, so just build from there. That's the smartest way to do maintenance if you're coming from a deficit. But do understand that the scale is gonna go up, but it's not gonna jump up significantly. And it's the same thing when you go from maintenance to a surplus, which is what I'm doing. The scale is gonna go up, it has to go up. For me especially, it has to go up. But I understand what's happening, and I'm doing it in a very slow and controlled way. So don't think that this is out of control. There's no boundaries. You can eat whatever you want. That's not how it works. You keep it tight, pull the reins in, do it in a controlled way over the course of a week, 300 calories over the course of a week, monitor your progress, probably add another 300, monitor your progress. Keep doing that until your weight stabilizes. Yes, it's gonna go up a little bit, but it will stabilize and there you will have found your maintenance. Okay, so my last question is, how many grams of protein in order to maintain or grow muscle mass while losing fat in a calorie deficit? So protein is a real game changer for fat loss. And um, the reason protein is so important is because yes, it does keep us feeling fuller longer. That's amazing. We all love that while we're in a calorie deficit, but um, it's also gonna help you maintain your muscle mass while you're trying to lose fat. Now, gaining muscle and losing fat at the exact same moment in time is impossible. So my suggestion is you go through a fat loss phase first. Decide how long you wanna be in a complete fat loss phase and do that first. You're gonna to wanna to aim for one gram of, um, per pound of goal weight. So if your goal weight is 150 pounds, you wanna aim for 150 grams of protein. You may not always get it, that's okay. Just aim for that number, okay? And stay in a fat loss phase until you are happy with where you are. At that point, you can start adding calories back in to your diet. And, and get into a surplus. And really, you wanna keep your protein about the same. And in fact, it may not even have to be as high when you're in a calorie surplus because it may sound counterintuitive, but protein's role in a calorie surplus is not nearly as significant as it is in a deficit because you're already eating more calories than your body needs. We don't have to worry about losing mass. So that part's not at play. So if you keep that same number, you're gonna be fine and you, you may not hit it because if you're going into a surplus, it would be good to include some more carbs along the way as well. So I hope that answers the question. Um, what, in general, one gram per pound of goal weight and just aim for that. Do the best you can to reach that each and every day. Okay, you guys, there was upper body workout day today um, and some Q and A. And just, just to point out too, when I came to the gym today, I was feeling very sluggish. The weather here in Virginia has been crazy, hot, cold, hot, cold. I've been fighting something one day, feeling great the next, fighting it, just back and forth. Sleep's been an issue. But I will say this, I felt super sluggish when I arrived at the gym. I felt way better now. You know, way better when I walked out that door and I feel even better now. So it just, it just goes to show it was hard to get here to the gym today, but I got stronger as I went through my workout. First sets or so were heavy. After that, I really got warmed up and felt great. So um, sometimes coming to the gym when you're just kind of eh, it's the best thing that you can do. Um, thank you for your Instagram questions and we'll be doing more of these Q and A's. I like doing these a lot. Um, so keep sending me your questions. And thank you again for being here. Click subscribe. 
Uh, we got a lot more stuff coming your way. So thanks a bunch for being here. Take care, you guys. Have a great day.